Today in Luther's Kitchen, we're making s'mores bars. Better than s'mores at the campfire, these s'mores bars have a brownie center and homemade marshmallows on top. First thing you're gonna do is either in a food processor or in a gallon sized bag, you're gonna crush eight sheets of graham cracker and you can do this with a rolling pin. Now you wanna get your oven preheated to 350 degrees and get yourself an eight by eight inch uh, square baking dish and carefully place foil inside the bottom and press it in. This is imperative because if you don't put the foil in, you can't get your bars out. Now we're taking a half a stick of melted butter and we're combining it in the bag with the crushed graham crackers and we're just gonna massage that a bit with our hands to combine the butter and the graham cracker together. This is gonna form the crust and the graham cracker part of the s'mores bar. So just give it a good massage and then you're gonna take that mixture and you're gonna press it into the pan that has the foil lining. Using a dry measure cup to press in the graham cracker crumbs gives you a um, very firm bottom and also evens out the thickness around the square. Once it's ready to go, you're gonna bake this at 350 for about 15 minutes. And while it's baking, you wanna start with your brownie batter, which is the chocolatey part of the s'mores bar. So you can do this by hand. You don't need to use a stand mixer. First thing you're gonna do is combine melted butter and granulated sugar. Then we're gonna drop in a couple of eggs. And once the eggs are well incorporated and the yolk is disappeared, you can add in your dry ingredients. So give that all a good mix. And we also added some pure vanilla extract to that. For the dry ingredients, we're using a really good quality cocoa powder, Dutch processed if you can find it. Um, we're using all-purpose flour and kosher salt and some baking powder. Once you drop the dry ingredients in though, you don't wanna over mix, otherwise you're gonna get a very tough brownie. Now that that crust is set and cooled slightly, we are putting the batter on top and we're gonna use an offset spatula to make sure we smooth out the batter so that it's in an even layer. Now that it's super smooth, this is gonna bake for about 25 minutes at 350 or until a toothpick comes out clean in the center. Let that cool for a few minutes before you place the marshmallows on top. These are homemade marshmallows. We have a separate video that um, demonstrates how to make these delicious, fluffy, homemade marshmallows. And we're gonna use nine of them. So I cut them into um, kind of obscure squares. They're kind of hard to cut. Uh, but I'm gonna put nine, and then I'm putting this under a broiler for maybe a minute and a half. You really gotta watch it, because otherwise you're gonna have a fire and very charred marshmallows. And after a minute and a half, it should look like this. And when it's cool enough, you're going to pull the foil out. And this is why lining it with foil is so important and makes this process super easy. And because I use the marshmallows as a guide, I'm gonna cut it into nine pieces. Each piece has its own designated marshmallow. For obvious reasons, these are best eaten fresh because the marshmallow is still charred on the outside and super gooey on the inside. Um, but these will keep in an airtight container for a few days. I don't think they'll last a few days. These are so delicious. For this delicious recipe and more, visit myclasskincook.com.